you're sitting here, you may be wondering, what is competitive theater? Well, we're not here to talk to you about competitive theater in general, but DIs. So uh, what is a DI? It's a dramatic interpretation. So you're going to pick a dramatic piece. Uh, they usually tend to focus more towards monologues. You can pick scripts, but it's going to focus around the development of a character. So you're going to have a plot in it. Uh, we recommend doing story maps, and you're going to have a huge climax in it. Um, my DI this year, I had one character, and then another character that had one line. Uh, my DI this year, I had one character, and then I had another character with like three or four lines that just interjected mm -hmm. throughout. How to choose a piece. Always pick a DI that where you connect with the character. It's better to connect it so later on when you're doing your piece, you actually can feel that emotion that you felt before. DI should focus around one character, like we said. Okay, so whenever you're picking a piece, um, you want to connect to the character not only for like emotion, but also so you don't get sick of the piece. I know um, my DI, even at the end of the year, even when I loved it, I was like, I don't want to do this. I'm getting bored of this. So once you're doing an entire piece for a year and competing it all the time and practicing it all the time, you're going to start getting tired of it. So pick a story that you really like, something that you really connect to, and some sort of message that you really, really like. Um, we have a lot of judges that will pick pieces based on messages and will preference things because they connect to a message. So um, my message this year for my piece was about infidelity and I did Gone Girl. So Gone Girl is a piece that you could basically say has no more morality to it, but I cut my piece and focused my piece basic, uh, based upon infidelity and how far infidelity can um, drive someone. Um, when you are picking a piece, keep the blocking minimal because you do not want to be throwing yourself across the mm -hmm. room because that is very distracting to the judges. Um, good little pantomiming things would be folding laundry, washing dishes, painting, brushing your hair, little things like that that adds to the piece but does not take away from it. Um, if you practice your piece on tiles, we usually do a like a nine square rule. So you like stand in the middle of the tile and then you can only move around to those nine squares. Uh, some people travel more, some people don't. Just keep it to minimal because you'll have some judges um, like a state who will say things like your piece has too much acting in it or so they don't like it and you get sevens and don't break. <laughs> What to include? You will need to, you will need a teaser that is usually one to two minutes long, and this is where you will introduce your character and give a little information about your character before you start your piece. Um, so teasers are usually um, something that's just gonna like draw in the judge and make them listen because if your piece is not very exciting at the beginning or lacks energy, then the judge is just gonna be like and start zoning out and then they're gonna miss important details that you say and they're not going to really get your piece. A teaser is like a, a big part of your piece because this is where it's basically to make or break you because if your judge is not interested in the first two minutes then they're gonna zone out and not pay attention to your piece at all. So you really need to create an interesting teaser to draw your judges in. An introduction is usually the ne is usually the next and it's usually about a minute long, and this is where you focus on your piece and give background about your piece from your point of view. And you can give, like, uh, what's the word? You can connect and show, like, give an example of how you connect to it, or you can use quotes are always good. Mm -hmm. um, social issues are always good to, have, like, relate back to it so the judge can be like, oh, this relates to this, the relates, relates to this. Um, some people will pick things that start without a fact about something. Uh, lots of people have their introductions about drug addiction. Um, like I already said, mine was about infidelity. Um, people can talk about uh, just basically it's just addressing your moral. It's a place where you can focus your piece and give uh, some sort of message that the judge should be able to take it away. And you also introduce your piece, uh, give the name and title. And the author. It, yeah.
Um, my piece was about spouse abuse. So my very first thing that I said was a fact about how many women are abused by their spouse each year. And that, I feel like, connects the judges because it's such a large number that people are kind of astonished by it. Mm -hmm. A climax. A climax is where you need to shift in your piece and create right up until like this, like this point, and then right before you fall. It needs to be towards the end of the piece. Important things to remember about a climax is you need to have some rising action before that. So there needs to be some intensity building so that the judge can see it coming. So um, other things to also think about a climax is they usually come towards about the end of the piece. Uh, my climax is right about nine minutes and my piece ends at 9.45, 9.50 about every single time I do it. So you want to keep it right about at the end, but have some falling action. So it's basically like your typical um, literary story map. Yeah. Um, this is where you could use, uh, climax is usually where a character realizes something, has a turning point in their life, um, something major happens that causes them to react to, in some way, whether that be in anger, sadness. Like, it's just one of those moments that just hits your character, and that's when you need to have all this um, explode with emotion. It's basically, that's when it needs to hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, time limit. Uh, time limit is 10 minutes. Like I said, my piece typically runs 9.45, 9.50. Um, most tournaments that you go to during the regular season aren't going to be too strict on this. Usually you have about a 30 second grace period, so you can go about 10.30. Uh, whenever you get into districts, um, Misha, there is no grace period. So if you go over 10 minutes, you're automatically disqualified. So most of you guys shouldn't have to worry about that this year. I would recommend aiming your piece about 9 minutes and 30 seconds, like max, because if for some reason, you take a dramatic pause that's longer than you normally do. You want to have that 30-second grace period additional to the extra 30-second grace period. My piece typically uh, speeds up at tournaments, so I'll run it at home, and my piece could be 10.05, and usually I take 20 seconds off of that time because I just I don't take as long of pauses. So this is just going to be... Um, Everyone is completely different on yeah. this for how you react to stress, how you react to nerves, yeah. how fast you talk. My piece personally was 9 minutes and 15 seconds around that area. And when I performed it at tournaments, it was like 8.55. So it was just like it sped, it sped up. And it was mostly because my nerves. When I get in front of people, I talk faster. Almost so, everyone does. Yeah. yeah. So that's like how I sped up and how I decreased my time. If you want to get, like, an example of this, uh, perform it for your peers. I know whenever I perform it for my friends that have never seen it before or my teachers, I speed up so much. Yeah. So, so what DI is not to do? Ooh, the fun part. <laughs> um, the typical DIs that you see a lot are Lovely Bones, Child Called It, Cancer DIs, mm -mm. Holocaust, mm -mm. I would stray away from those because if you get into a room with someone that has a cancer piece and another cancer piece and then a holocaust, you want to walk in and you want to mix things up a bit. And so it's not like cancer, 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 holocaust, holocaust, I'm dead kind of thing. Yeah. You want to like put something in there that's not typical, but still a dramatic DI. Um, rule of thumb is ask a varsity member. Um, if they have seen it done a bunch, because a lot of these people are going to know sitting through rounds. Uh, I know in, uh, at state there were DIs where I'd been like, are you kidding me? I've <laughs> seen this piece done by five different people at like multiple tournaments this year. Like it's not, it's not anything unique and it just starts getting boring, especially when you have uh, judges who know what they're doing because they'll be like, can you pick something different? Yeah. And it's also, it's a terrible feeling to walk into a round and go, oh my gosh, they have the same piece as me. 
Yeah. Like, that is a terrible feeling. So uh, ask a varsity member if they've seen it done before. Um, a couple pieces to add to that list are, um, I know My Name is Malala is coming really, really popular. I know I've had this happen before, but my piece um, last year was very, very common, but not in our district. Yeah. So I got to um, nationals, and there were five people with the exact same piece as me, and it was so terrifying and so stressful, and I just do not want that to happen to anybody yeah. else. Um, Turpin does have a list of every DI that went to nationals from year up to like 2008. So if you want to look on that and make sure that like your piece is not on the national list, that would be good. Another thing, it can be, when, yeah. it can be on there like it can, maybe once or twice. Yeah, like but that's not like, a big deal. And especially if you see it like coming up super, super quickly. I know my name is Malal is going to be a DI that everybody does because last year I saw it done a couple times and then this year I have seen it done so like a lot of times mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people if a piece is starting to do well then they'll pick up that piece. Um, other things to think about, watch national finals rounds for DI, and you'll see a lot of really good pieces. Uh, a lot of these pieces even came from Missouri. Yeah. Uh, one of the kids that placed third at nationals last year um, competed in our circuit, and I he's super, super nice, and I talked to him, like, multiple times at tournaments and then saw him on the national stage, and it's crazy. Um, but don't pick pieces that have been on the national stage. Yeah, so do not go. watch a national finals round and go, ooh, this piece would be excellent, and mm -hmm. cut it. Because anyone that knows anything about uh, speech and debate, competitive theater, has seen those pieces and will go, really? <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing to stray away from is if you have personally seen it, like if you go out and you see it and you're like, oh, I like that DI, and then you come back and you cut it, chances are you're going to go up against that person. So I would stray away from picking a DI that you have seen at a tournament. The other problem with that is, is if you have seen it done by someone before, then chances are you're going to cut it like that exactly. person. You're going to interpret it just like that person, and you're going to do it just like that person. That's when you start having people getting really mad and yeah. challenging your pieces. And that's just not something to do and something that is very frowned upon. Mm -hmm. And I know people get in trouble for that, mm -hmm. and coaches will get mad. <laughs> yeah. So those are the things that you need to keep in mind when you are choosing a DI, cutting a DI. So I hope these things are helpful.